Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is February 26, 1955, and the title is Crack Up. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke, brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Come in, Marshal. Come in. Hello, Teeters. Uh, you got time to give me a haircut? You're the only customer I've had in an hour, Marshal. Uh-huh. You hang your coat and your gun belt right over there. I'll get things ready for you. Okay. Say, haven't seen you around town lately, Marshal. Well, I've been over in Abilene for a week. I just got back late last night. Oh, must come in on the Midnight Santa Fe, huh? Yeah, that's right. I wish I could get out of Dodge once in a while. Well, not the way I have to do it, you wouldn't. Maybe you're right, Marshal. Maybe you're right. Hey. This is a new chair you got, isn't it? Yes, sir. The finest barber's chair west of St. Louis. <laughs> That's pretty fancy. Here, try it. Ah. Comfortable? Well, I'll tell you after I find out if you've raised your prices to pay for it. Here, let me get this cloth over you. Here you are. Haircut's still a quarter, Marshal. What about shaves? Uh, the price of a shave's gone up a dime, Marshal. A dime? Now, Marshal, you wouldn't stand in the way of progress for the sake of a dime, would you? Yeah, but who's progress? Hmm. Anyway, you don't need a shave, not today. <laughs> That's a good thing. See, Marshal, you know Mabel over at the Long Branch. Yeah. Well, last Wednesday night... Oh, take a chair, stranger. I'll be with you in a few minutes. Last Wednesday in night... a few minutes? Yeah, that's right. You're next, right in line. Barber. What? I ain't next. Why, of course you are. Nobody's ahead of you. I said I ain't next. You mean you won't wait? That's right. Oh, I sure you wait. will. I work fast. It won't be longer than ten minutes at the most. Now, you just sit down. I I'll want to be... shave. I want to right now. You can cut his hair later. What? You heard me. Now, look, mister. You don't know who you're... Shut up, Titus. Get out of that chair, mister. Take this sheet off of me, Titus. All right. There. Okay, mister, I'm out. Then move. I want to sit down. You don't understand. I don't understand what. I didn't get out of that chair so as you could have it. You're going to be troublesome, ain't you? I am. And there isn't much you can do about it. Isn't there? You don't see very well, mister. What? I'm not wearing a gun. It's hanging on the wall over there. You gonna shoot an unarmed man in front of a witness? Go get your gun. Put it on. No. Do it. You lick, mister. How you gonna make me do it? Shoot me? Put your gun on. I don't like killings, but if you don't turn around and walk out that door, I'm gonna half kill you with my fists. Now get moving. All right. You got me this time, but next time you'll be wearing a gun. It'll be some different then. Who 
Oh, my goodness, Marshal, you took an awful chance. Who was he, Teters? I never saw him before, but he might have killed you, Marshal. Ah, that would have been murder. You can get hung for murder. Now, quit shaking. Let's get this haircut over with. He won't be back. Hello, Chester. I was looking for you. Well, I've been right here in the office the past half hour. Yes, I know. I'm past the barbershop. Teeters told me. And he told me how you handled that fellow, too. Oh, did he? Teeters described him to me, Mr. Dillon. I know who he is. You do? He come here about a week ago, just after you went to Abilene. Well, what's his name? Springer. Nate Springer. What? I should have tried, Mr. Dillon. You sure that was Nate Springer? I couldn't have been nobody else. Why? He said you don't know him? I've heard about him. You have? Where? All over. Nate Springer's got quite a reputation. Was a gunman, you mean? Yeah, he's a gunman. And they say he's the most nerveless gunman that ever lived. He's all ice. Bad Masterson told me once that out in Arizona, a man got the drop on him and Springer started to laugh. The man asked him what he was laughing about and Springer said he'd never had before and he didn't want to die without seeing what it was like. Well, forevermore. What happened? It's kind of hard to shoot a man who's enjoying his first laugh. Yeah. My. Well, I'll be darned. What do you suppose he's doing in Dodge? Springer's a killer. A paid killer. That's all he's ever done anywhere. Then why don't you go arrest him? Well, he's not wanted that I know of. There are no circulars out on him. Well, but you can't wait till he kills somebody. No. And I can't put him in jail till he does. <laughs> This is it, l and Filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. l and has got everything. It's the best. Yes, l and is best. Stands out from all the rest. l and stands out for flavor. 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 The Miracle Tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. And notice how mild it is. L&M stands out for effective filtration. 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 No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip. L&M's got everything. L&M, light and mild. America's best filter tip cigarette. For another cup of coffee, Matt? Well, I'll take time, Doc. That's good. Here you are, then. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Well, are things pretty wild up in Abilene? Well, it's still a camp with a hair on, Doc. Worse than Dodge? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> and I'll stay here. Oh, why? You're usually complaining about Dodge. I'm thinking about business, Matt. Business. What's there to do in a peaceful town? Oh, aside from delivering a baby now and then, and setting a broken leg. <laughs> you know, sometimes you sound pretty bloodthirsty, Doc. I don't do the shooting, Matt. It's men like that Nate Springer you were telling me about. He, uh, he's sitting over there in the corner, Doc. He is? Well, where? There. Alone with his back to the wall. Oh. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, my, he looks like a killer. Already. He is. Yeah. You see how he keeps turning around? And... Oh, it's like he thinks everybody in this room is his enemy. A man like that doesn't have friends. Oh, oh, oh. Well, he's getting up, man. He's... Oh, well, he's coming this way. Too. Yeah. He hasn't finished his dinner. He better turn around, Doc. Uh, okay. But you keep your eye on him. I don't like that man. Hey, you... Me? What was you staring at me for? 
I wasn't staring at you. No man stares at me without a reason. I don't like it. I want to know why he was doing it. Oh, now, look here, mister. You're getting yourself all upset over nothing. Now, you ruin your dinner working yourself up. Tell me why you were staring at me. I'll put a hole in you. I'll do it. Well, you're awful jumpy for a big gunman. Tell me, I said. Hold it, Springer. You getting into this, mister? I am. Who are you, anyway? Matt Dillon. Dillon? That's right. I knew I'd run into you sooner or later. Oh, why? My line of work, there's always some lawman wanting to interfere. Sure. And it'll happen here, Springer. You kill anybody. Fair fights. Fair fighting. Eh? Not when you're paid to pick a fight with a man. Like I said, Marshal, I knew I'd run into you. Springer, when I find out who you're after, I can probably find out who's paying you. And I'll jail you and him both. You're going to lose a lot of sleep trying to find out, Marshal. I can stand it. You're the one that needs sleep, Springer. A lot of it. Without any bad dreams. <laughs> oh, well. Looks like the man of ice is starting to melt, man. Yeah. You know, something's happening to him, Doc. And whatever it is, it isn't good. Kitty. Huh? Oh, I didn't see you, Matt. Yeah, sit down, if you got time. Well, I don't have to go to work till after sundown. Good. Guess I might as well sit here and watch Front Street with you as do anything else. <laughs> little air is good for you. Ah, uh, and a lot of it would be even better. Well, you ought to buy a horse, Kitty. Take a ride up the river every day or so. I'm too broke, Matt. Well, I'll lend you one. I got a little bay that's pretty gentle. Imagine having more than one horse. <laughs> That's about all the government gives me, Kitty. A couple of cheap horses. I seen you riding your own. Well, I gotta keep him in shape in case I decide to quit. The day you quit, that horse will be as old as a man. <laughs> I hope you're right, Kitty. Hey, look, Matt. What? Walking down the middle of the street. Yeah, uh, Springer. Now, who'd expect a man like Springer to have a little yellow dog? I don't know the dog's his, Kitty. Maybe he's just following him. He's right at his heel. I don't think Springer knows it. Oh, he's trying to sniff at him. <laughs> Matt, he shot him. Poor little dog, he didn't do anything. I'll be back, Kitty. Well, what do you want? Wash was just a dog... Did you think he was going to bite you, Springer? He might have. How do I know? I don't know what it was. Could have been anything. Or anybody. I knew it wasn't a man. But you just said Who it. Who cares what I said? That dog shouldn't have been sniffing around. Not around you, that's for sure. Well? Why don't you go get a drink, Springer? I think you need one. I don't drink, Marshal. Never. Huh? You don't have any vices, do you? Marshal. Nothing. Go ahead. Matt, is he crazy or something? I don't know, Kitty. Well, he's the meanest man I ever saw. He didn't shoot that dog out of meanness. No? Why, then? He's jumpy. Well, if he's that jumpy, nobody need worry about him. He's more dangerous now than the way everybody tells me he used to be. What do you mean? Suppose instead of a dog sniffing at his heel, it had been a man who just happened to bump into him. Oh, I'd hate to be the man. He'd probably get killed. That's right. Then Springer shouldn't be carrying a gun, Matt. Yeah, I know. Well, why don't you take it off him or run him out of town? If I did that, whoever's paying him would just hire another gunman, Kitty. The only way to stop this killing is to find out who that is. Well... I hope you do, before it's too late. That night I had Chester follow Springer around, keep an eye on him. 
But all he did was to buck the faro bank for a few hours and then go to bed earlier than the most respectable citizens. The next day, Chester went back to trailer him while I sat in the office and tried to figure a way to trap him and to tell him who'd hired him. By mid-afternoon, I was no further than when I'd started. The only idea I had was to choke it out of him. Hey, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? That doggone Nate Springer, he almost shot a girl over there. What? A girl over at the Alpha Ganza. What do you mean, he almost shot her? Well, sir, he stayed in his room all morning till just before noon. Never mind that. What about the girl? That's what I'm getting to. And then just after noon, he went over to the Alpha Ganza and started gambling. He was sitting at a table in the corner with his back again, one of them wooden windows. Uh-huh. Well, one of the girls that works here... Well, I guess she needed some air. So she slipped in behind Springer's chair and started pushing on that shutter. It's a wonder she got that far. He was raking in a pot. But when he heard her, I never seen a man move so fast, Mr. Dillon. Why, that poor girl near fainted the way he jumped around at her. Well, she's lucky she didn't get shot. He had his six gun stuck right in her face. He was within a hair of letting go of that hammer. And then when he saw who it was, oh, he started cussing her something fierce. Yeah. Well, he's getting worse. He's going to kill somebody, sure, acting that way. Yeah. And it won't even be the one he come here to kill. Oh, fancy him about to shoot a woman. Well, I guess I can't wait any longer, Chester. What you going to do? I'm going to try to shame him first. If that doesn't make him talking. I'm going to have to run him out of town. <laughs> L&M is best, stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobacco? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L and M's got everything. King size or regular, L and M is America's best filter tip cigarette. Dylan, I can't help thinking all your friends who told you about Nate Springer was mighty poor judges. He's about the uncoolest gunman I ever saw. I agree about that, Justice. Uh, who told you about him last? I don't remember. Been two or three years. Well, maybe it was just a lot of rumor. You know how talk gets started sometimes. Now, Wyatt Earp was the first man who told me about him. Oh. Look, uh, when we get inside here, you go to the bar and stay there, huh? Yes, sir. There he is, Mr. Dillon. I see him. All right, sir. Springer. Springer, come over here. Interrupting my game, Marshal. Your game's over, Springer, for good. What does that mean? Get out of Dodge. What? If you've been paid in advance, you better give him his money back. You're not going to earn it. You're saying I ain't? It's an hour to sundown. 
You'll be out of town before dark. It's a long time since a man's talked to me like that, Marshal. How long's it been since a dog scared you into shooting him? Uh, since you drew on a woman, huh? You lost your nerve, Springer. You aren't going to kill anybody. Shut up. Yeah, I'll shut up. If you tell me who hired you. No. Then who are you supposed to kill? I won't tell you. Okay, I didn't think you would. But you'll be out before dark, Springer. And don't ever come back. Ever. standing out here for? <laughs> Why aren't you inside with your feet on your desk the way you usually are? I'm waiting for somebody, Doc. Oh? Oh, you sound serious. It's Nate Springer. He's got about 20 minutes to leave town. Oh, is that so? Well, you finally had to come around here, didn't you? He's still in the Alifraganza over there. If he doesn't come out before dark, I'm going in after him. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh-uh. here comes somebody. Huh? Now, that's Chester. Oh, yes. Is it going to be a shooting, man? I doubt it, Doc. Springer's already backed down. Well, you never know. I'm going to get my things ready just in case. Sure, Doc. Hey, Mr. Dillon, I thought I'd better come tell you. What, Chester? Springer's been bellied up at that bar for the last half hour. He has? He's been taking on one glass after another. Uh, Doc was right. You never know. What? He's getting ready to use his gun, Chester. And I'm going over and stop him. Hey, look. You just come out. Yeah. He's headed this way. You stay here. I thought you didn't drink, Springer. I never did before. Well, you started too late. You haven't time to find your man. You're leaving town. I've found him. What? You. You I'm going to kill. Who hired you, Springer? Let's draw, Marshal. I feel like it now. Let's draw. Don't be a fool. You're drunk. Not that drunk. I can kill you. And I'll be all right again. Now. No! You shouldn't have tried it, Springer. He? No. I had to. Why? You my prison. Two years. I come out scared. Lost my nerve in that prison. Then why did you take this job? I, I had to. Who hired you, Springer? I did, Marshal. I hired me. I had to face somebody like you to get my nerve back. Don't you understand? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But it didn't work? No. And, and I paid everything I had for it. It, it cost me... Everything in the world. It's 
Springer. Our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. If you're a filter tip smoker, you should be smoking L&M's. When you try L&M's, the first thing you'll notice is how mild they are, how easy they draw. With L&M's pure white miracle tip, you enjoy all the taste. Try L&M's today. You'll like them. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Start smoking with a smile, with Chesterfield, smiling all the while, with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking, by Chesterfield. So smooth, so satisfying, Chesterfield. <laughs> Also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio show. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening. <laughs>